Python 3.14. Python, it's here. Ah, I've been waiting for this my whole career. Python, oh my goodness. But I'm also a bit sad because now what? Do we wait for version 3.162, the square root of 10? It's just not the same. Or Python 6.28, you know, 2 pi. And that's not gonna happen in my lifetime unless, you know, AI makes us all like invincible and impossible to kill. And then I'll be here in 500 years still making Python videos. Or maybe AI does all the coding for us and we don't need to make Python videos anymore. Or uh, maybe Rust actually becomes really easy to program in and then we'll all move to Rust. I, I have no idea. Python 6.28, I can tell you it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Anyway, let's stick with the here and now, shall we? So Python 3.14, it has actually some really nice new features that I'm gonna talk about in this video. But what actually matters depends also on what kind of developer you are and how you use Python. And we all use Python in different ways, right? So in this video, I'm not going to give you a complete overview of everything, but I am going to show you four features that I personally really love in 3.14 with, of course, some nice code examples. Now, if you want to learn more about how to design a piece of software from scratch, I have a free guide for you at iron.gold slash design guide. This contains the seven steps I take when I design new software. The link is also in the description of this video. Now, Python 3.14 is scheduled for final release on October 7, 2025. And there's a long list of changes going from free threading support that started in the previous version of Python, sub interpreters, new debugging tools, UUID upgrades, and syntax highlighting in the shell. If I start the Python interpreter, so this is Python 3.13, and I start typing a function, something like this, as you can see, there's no syntax highlighting whatsoever. It's literally just typing text. However, if I open the new Python 3.14 shell, and this is release candidate two, and I start typing, hey, there we have nice looking syntax highlighting. Isn't that nice? I really like this. I really, really do. I think it's a great improvement. But this is not like one of the main things I, I want to talk about in this video. It's one of the things that I quickly want to show you. Like I mentioned, I won't go through all of the changes in Python 3.14. Check out the release notes that I link to in the video description, where you can read what's part of the latest Python version. But for this video, focus on four things that I think are worth highlighting. And the first one is exception syntax. Here we have some Python code that raises exceptions. And there's various types of exceptions here, a value error, key error, some runtime error. And in my main function, I have a try accept block that calls the risky function. And as you can see, I'm catching various sorts of errors here and then doing something. And when I run this, then, well, we get that we caught one of these two errors. What Python 3.14 adds is that if you catch multiple exceptions, like here, you no longer need these parentheses. So you can simply type this. You see AI has not been trained yet on Python 3.14, so it suggests that we put the parentheses back. No, GitHub Copilot, we're not going to do that. As you can see, when I run this again, we get the same result because Python 3.14 can handle this. Now, arguably, this is like a really small thing, right? Uh, but it's still a quality of life improvement. I mean, if you're catching multiple exceptions all over your code, you've probably typed these parentheses a couple of times. And of course, typing parentheses as developers costs energy. We have to push those buttons on our mechanical keyboards. In fact, it saves us about 17 calories a year if we're working on a large code base where we're typing thousands of these parentheses. And that's enough to take one bite of a donut. I'll take it. In fact, I already did, so now I have to switch to Python 3.14. Oh, another fun thing that happened to me actually is my VS Code updated, and if I type clear, here you see that little thingy right there? That's a bug. Now, I could restart the terminal, and then this is going to go away, and then it will reappear after some time. But I think I'm just going to leave it in there. I like it kind of broken, you know? It's nice. Nice broken IDE. Anyway, 
Those are exceptions. The second thing that I want to show you is compression, Z standard compression that is now built into Python. And that's really nice. It's a pretty fast uh, compression algorithm. Like here, I create a little script that compares this new compression algorithm, that's right here, to uh, gzip and uh, bzip2. And I just made like a simple benchmark here where I'm doing a compression and a decompression. I'm uh, measuring the time and I'm just compressing some random data. So let me run this in my broken terminal and show you what happens. As you can see, uh, Z-Standard actually compresses this down to a really small size. It's also really fast. Uh, decompression is a bit slower than gzip in general, but the size is much smaller. And if you compare it to bzip2, it, the difference is even uh, bigger. So normally, maybe in the past, you would opt for bzip2 because it has smaller size as opposed to gzip, but then you would have a much slower compression and decompression time. And I get this kind of result every time I run this benchmark. It's not a complete benchmark and there's probably other types of data that you want to compress and decompress to make a true comparison. But it does look like this is really fast and it works really well. So this is perfect for, I don't know, you need to store like a uh, cache or log files or anything where both performance and size are important to you. The third thing that I want to mention that's new in Python 3.14 is template strings. And these are like F strings, but they're a sort of generalization of F strings. The issue with F strings is that they are interpolated directly. So basically you write your F string and it's interpolated and you, you don't, you can't do anything with the, uh, the way that it's being interpolated. It's just part of the interpreter. Now with templates, this is different. These basically uh, don't return a string, but they return a template object. And there you can see what the interpolations are and you can allow your own custom behavior that you can put on top of those. Here's an example of using these templates. So I'm importing template and interpolation from the template lib that's part of the string module. And then I have a bunch of functions. So what I'm doing in this code is I take some evil script code that I try to inject into a template. In essence, templates give you full control over how expressions are handled. And then you can uh, do all sorts of things. For example, you can use this for safe HTML rendering and sanitize inputs or for putting automatic filters on logs so that passwords are not rendered, things like that. In this example, I've written an F function, so this sort of simulates f strings. This is actually taken uh, from the pep that introduced the template. And the only thing that's added here is a sanitize option. So what sanitize does is that it escapes the values. And that's what you see right here. And then what you can do is have a to HTML function that takes a template and then uh, turns it into a string and sanitizes it. So that allows you to define your own logic in this way. And then what you can do use the template by, well, first let's create some evil script that does something. And then we're trying to inject it into a string. And as you can see, I'm using a template string here. That's the T in front of the string and not an F string. And then we can print the result of turning that into HTML or just print it as a regular non-sanitized string. Let's run this. And then as you can see in the first version, we simply get the injected evil script. And in the second case, we're getting an escaped version. And that's what templates allow you to do. So they're probably not something that you will use regularly in your Python code, but they might be part of some libraries that allow rendering HTML or doing logging or stuff like that. Templates, a really nice addition to Python 3.14. The final thing I want to show you is deferred annotations. Until now, if you had a class that referred to itself, like here, for example, I have a node class. And a node can have a next node. So that means that the node type is part of the class definition itself. Now, if you're using an older version of Python, so let's say I'm using Python 3.13.7, you see that we get an error here, right? Because node is not recognized. So what you had to do to solve this is you needed to basically uh, type it uh, like this, which would kind of work, or uh, you could use uh, self, which you import from typing, or what you had to do was add from future import 
annotations. Uh, let me just comment that out. So like this, and then it's fine. But that's an extra import that we have to do, right? Now, the nice thing about Python 3.14, let me go back to my virtual environment. Uh, I can now remove this from future import, and this still works just fine, which is really nice. So in Python 3.14, these annotations, they're deferred by default. So in essence, the future is not what it used to be. And what's even better, there's now an annotation lib module, and that allows you to inspect annotations without actually evaluating them. Here you can see how that works. So let's say I have a uh, function, my function, that takes an int and that takes a node or non returns a boolean. Doesn't really matter what this function actually does. But then you can use the get annotations function from annotation lib and pass it some Python object, in this case a function, and then we can print the result of that. If I run this, you see that we get a specification of these annotations. Now, is this something that you will use daily in your Python code? Probably not, but if you're working on a library that relies on type annotations to do things like Pydantic or FastAPI or uh, tools in general that introspect your code, this is going to be huge. Also, overall, if you have these self-reference, it just means less boilerplates, less imports, and overall cleaner files, which I really like. And by the way, if you enjoy this kind of deep dive into new Python features, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. That really helps. Now, as you've seen in this video, Python 3.14 has plenty of great changes, but in the end, it depends on what you need as a developer, obviously. For me, the exception syntax, template strings, Z standard compression, no more future import annotations, makes this a really solid and very practical upgrade. But I'd love to hear what you think. Are you excited about template strings or the SOP interpreters? Or are you just happy that the version number finally lines up with Pi? Let me know in the comments. Now, one of the nice things of working with Python is that it has a really good standard library. And it's likely that you're not using that to its full potential. So in this video, I go over 10 standard library modules that you may not know about, but that are really powerful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.